Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my tutorial on how to convert App Inventor apps into Java apps. Today, what we're going to focus on is finish making our Java app. I'm also going to show you how to install AI2 Live Complete. I'm going to show you how to catch events, make the phone vibrate, get latitude and longitude, open up the settings window, also show you how to open other activities, convert text to speech, catch when a user shakes their phone, get permission to use features, how to set up the manifest file, and a whole bunch of other different things. What I'm going to do first is I'll show you exactly where you can go to learn more about how to implement everything else you could ever want to implement using all the tools I've been using in this video. So let's go look at it. Okay, so here is the API. You can go to 3nportal.com forward slash bridge API. I'll have a link in the description. And here you're going to find everything. This is how I learned how to put all this together. So if you want to learn about the accelerometer and the different functions available, just click on that, come over here, and you can see all of the different things you're going to be able to do with the accelerometer. And it's pretty easy to learn. Like I said, it's just basically the same thing that I've been covering in this tutorial. So now let's jump over and finish our app. Okay, so here is all of the blocks. And basically what I'm going to need to do is catch all of the different events. I showed you previously how to trigger the events. This time I'm going to catch them all and make them all work. Very first thing we're going to do is handle the zombie button click. And whenever it's clicked, we are going to have everything vibrate or have the phone vibrate anyway. Then we're going to check if the provider has GPS capabilities. If not, we're going to send them to the settings window where they're going to be able to turn those on. And then we're going to open up a notifier window, of course, if they do not have GPS set up. And we're then going to get the latitude and longitude and then use text to speech like you have right here to speak out everything. So let's go back into Eclipse. Okay, so here I am inside of Eclipse, and basically what we're going to need to do here is come in and make this thing right here work. Event Dispatcher. We are going to have to create a method or a function called Dispatch Event that's going to handle all of these events for us. And this is actually pretty easy to set up. All we're going to do is right click inside of the little window and then go to Source, and then we're going to go to Override Implement Methods and click on that. And this window is going to pop up and inside of form you might have to click that to open it. We're specifically going to look for dispatch event component string object. This guy right here. And we're going to put it after define and hit OK. And it's going to put all that in there for us. And there we go. And we're going to come in here and we are going to delete this because we're going to handle that in another way. Give ourselves a little bit of space. Then we're going to handle what exactly is going to happen when the zombie button is clicked. So we're going to say if and we're going to say component, this is how we find out if the button was clicked on, equals, and then we're going to type in zombie button, which is the name for our button. And then we're going to specifically check to make sure it was a click event that was sent here. We're going to say event name equals, and then inside of here, we're going to type click. And there we go. And the click, of course, is going to come from right here. There's click. There's the word click. That's where that came from. And then zombie button, of course, is what we have up here, right there. Okay, so that's how we handle that event. Now, all the things we want to do whenever the zombie button is clicked on. Well, we want to go in and have the phone vibrate. So, zombie, moan, sound. And then we're going to click that and go vibrate. And we could always come in here and just double click on that. And that's going to open up vibrate. We want to vibrate it for 500 milliseconds. And there we go. And it's done. Next thing we want to do is we want to play the moan sound. So we're going to go zombie moan sound right like this. And then we're just simply going to type in play right like that, and it's done. Now, before we want to go and get the latitude and longitude data, we want to check if the provider is set up as GPS. And to do that, we're going to go GPS provider name, which we created in the last part of the tutorial. And then we're going to go location sensor one and say, hey, we want to get the provider name. And that's all we need to do and put a semicolon there at the end. Then we want to verify that the provider name that came back was GPS. So we're going to say if, and then we're going to put a not sign in here or an exclamation point, which is basically going to give us the opposite of whatever this was. So what we're going to say is GPS provider name, check if it equals GPS. GPS, and if this comes back as true, it's going to turn it into false, which means that everything inside of here is going to be executed. Put your little bracket there again. 
Now if we want to open up a notifier, all we do is go show alert, and then we can type in whatever the message is, enable GPS in settings, right like that. Another thing we could do is actually go and open up the activity settings that are going to allow us to do that. To do that, we just go activity starter one, and we define the action that we want to use here. And in this situation, it's going to be android.settings.location. And in the previous App Inventor tutorial, I actually showed you how to look up all this stuff. I'm gonna have to zoom out here a little bit. And location, source, settings, right like that. And then of course, put the semicolon there. And now that we said what we actually want to have open, we just go activity, starter, one, exactly like we do in App Inventor and start activity. And it already knows which one because we told it. Let's go look over at App Inventor. And if we come over here inside of App Inventor, where is it? Oh, look at this. Looks almost exactly the same. Activity starter, here we define the action. Here we show what we wanna have open, then we go start activity. So pretty easy. Now what we wanna do is retrieve the latitude and longitude data. And you can see over here where we are getting the provider name, GPS, and da 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 da. And then right here where we're gonna go in and actually get the latitude and longitude and set that. Go back into Eclipse and let's make it. So we're gonna go latitude is equal to, and we're gonna to have to turn a double, which is basically a number with decimal places on it, into a string, and then we go location, sensor, one. And if we wanna get the latitude, we just type in latitude, right like this, and there it is. Put a semicolon at the end, and then we're gonna get longitude pretty much in exactly the same way. Whoops, forgot to come in here and put a dot. There we go. We're gonna get the longitude now. Copy, paste that in there. Longitude and longitude. Perfect. Now if we want to convert this text to actual speech and it'll actually read it out like you saw in the last tutorial, just go text to speech, one, dot, and then speak, and then we want to put our message inside of here. So we're gonna go zombies, latitude is, put a space inside of there, put a plus sign, and then just put in latitude, which is the name of that. And then we can say zombies, make sure you put a space in there, zombies, longitude is, put another space in there, and then put in longitude. Put a semicolon, and you're done. That's all you have to do for text-to-speech. And then we're gonna type in return true, which is what this thing was complaining about up here, right there where it says Boolean, okay? And actually, if you come in here and put your mouse over this, you're gonna see add return statement right there, okay? So that's what's going on. So you have to make sure that you either return a true or a false. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say else, because we have other events we wanna catch, if the component equals, and let's catch the accelerometer, sensor one, and shaking is what we wanna catch this time. If we come up here, see, they're shaking right there. All right, I'm back down again. Whoop, a little bit too far. And the event name is equals, and here we're gonna say shaking. So that means person shaking the phone, and we wanna do something different. Put another bracket here, come in here, and what we wanna do here is we want to play our zombie attack sound, and we just go play like we have previously, and then we wanna return true again. And then after this, we say return false. And that is all the code we need to do here. Basically, the only other thing we need to do, oh, wait a second, I think I saw this error. Let's just go return, add a return statement, and there's another false. Oops, see, I forgot that false, and it fixed it for me, so that's beautiful. Okay, so everything here is perfect, and we're gonna save that. And the last thing we need to do is go in and set up what is called the manifest file. So we'll go over here to Android Manifest and open that up. And here it is. We just have to make sure we have everything properly set up. The only thing you might have to worry about here, you might have to change this, but it says hello zombie and that's perfect. It's all lowercase. You could actually come in here to the minimum version and lower that to five, and that's just the Android version you're gonna be working with. Then what you're gonna to need to do is get permission to use both the GPS and Vibrate. So why don't you do what I do? Just go into Google and then say permission to use GPS and then type in Android. Perfect. And then I'm gonna come in here and I can see right here, GPS Android location permissions, love Stack Overflow. And we're just gonna come in here, and I can see right here is the code that I wanna get. Just gonna select all of it, copy that, jump back over into Eclipse. And then right after, right here, where we set the different versions of Android we wanna work, I'm gonna paste this in here. Access find location, uses permission, and then I'm actually going to put a couple more inside of here. I'm gonna go and type in course location, and then I'm gonna type in mock location, 
and these are all the things you could possibly ever need in regards to getting location data and then I'm also going to type in location extra commands and then I also want to get permission to be able to vibrate and to do that you're just going to come in here and type in vibrate and there you go now I have permission to do all the things with my app that I need to do and I don't know if I showed you this or not but let's jump back over here if you want to look up all the different permissions that are available to you manifest permissions just click on this guy right here and you're going to see all of the permissions and if you just search for whatever you're trying to get permission to use it's going to pop up inside of that okay back inside of here another thing I want to do here for the icon it has IC launcher right there well my icon is actually icon ping is what I want to use so I'm going to come in here and just type in icon there we go for my theme I'm going to get more into this at a later date but I am specifically inside of this going to just type in Android style forward slash theme no title bar and then I want this to be full screen perfect make sure this is set to main activity and then I also want to lock this into portrait mode so I'm going to go Android screen orientation is equal to portrait and that is it everything else is perfectly fine so I'm going to save that and we are done the whole entire Android app is finished but I promised you I was also going to show you how to install AI2 Live Complete, which is basically a version of App Inventor that adds a whole bunch of additional functionality, while at the same time you don't need to be connected to the internet to hook it up. So let's take a look at that. Alright, so to install AI2 Live Complete, you're just going to have to go to sourceforge.net forward slash projects, AI Live Complete, files, AI2 Live Complete, da 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 da, I have a link in the description. Then you're going to go to files, and then you're going to go to this guy right here and download the zip file, AI2 Live Complete dot zip. And then whenever you do, you're going to get the zip file, you're going to open it up. And then if you are on Windows, all you need to do is open up the folder, and to start the server, you're going to double click on this inside of the folder. That's going to start the server for you. And then the build server, which actually converts everything into an actual Android app, is this guy right here. You're going to double click on that and open it up. And a window is going to open up a little terminal window. You have to keep those terminal windows open. If you, however, are on Linux or on a Macintosh, you're going to have to go change directory to wherever you put this file that you just unzip. And if you type in ls then inside of your terminal, you're going to see all of these files right here. You're then going to have to type in change mod and make all the sh files executable windows users by the way you're done you don't need to do anything else you don't have to do any of this stuff and then after you do that you just type in dot forward slash start ai server dot sh and all of this stuff's going to come on your screen and then at the very very bottom you're going to see development app servers now running and then what you're going to need to do is do the same thing for the build server so dot forward slash start build server dot sh in the same well actually you're going to have to go back and type in change directory because you're going to have to keep the terminal window open you can't close it if you close it the server is going to shut down so you're going to have to open up a new terminal window go to that directory and then this time type in dot forward slash start build server dot sh and if you have any trouble at all, chances are you're using an old version of Java. To find out if you're using an old version of Java, just type in Java forward slash version. And more than likely 1.6 is going to pop up. So what we're going to do is we can go look at the different Oracle versions of Java that are available to us. If we go to change directory library, this is on a Mac. It's going to be different, of course, with Linux. But this isn't even needed. But then you can also go into System Library Java Virtual Machines, and it's going to show you OSX versions of Java and so forth and so on. And you can see right here that's where the 1.6 is, and the 1.7 is what you need. If you don't have Java at all, you're going to have to install it, and I trust you can do that. So basically what we need to do is make sure we are running Java 1.7 and not Java 1.6. This is if you get any errors whenever you execute those previous two commands. So what you need to do is go and download Java and install it. And the quick way to switch over to Java 1.7 if you won't, don't want to change it everywhere is to type in export Java underscore home equals exactly what you see right here. And then what you're going to do is type in 1.7 right like that. Okay. And then type in Java version. You're going to see 1.7 is the version that's being used. And then you can come in and type in dot forward slash start build server dot sh and everything is going to execute. After you do that, you're going to go in your browser to localhost colon 8888 and you can actually see that, that location. Well, I don't actually have it here. 
let's go to the next one. It's actually in the terminal going to show you to go to localhost colon 8888. Then you're going to type in your email address and click on login. And whenever you do, this is what AI2 Live Complete looks like. Okay, so covered a ton of things in the last two tutorials. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.